Hey guys, welcome back to another video in the series of Jenkins Automation. So today we'll talk about multi-branch pipelines in Jenkins. So the topics we are going to discuss today is the first topic is what is multi-branch pipeline? Why do we need it? Creation and configuration and the demo part. So the first question is what is multi-branch pipeline? The multi-branch pipeline project types enables you to implement different Jenkins file for different branches of the same project. In a multi-branch pipeline project, Jenkins automatically discovers, manages and executes pipelines for branches which contain a Jenkins file in source control. This eliminates the need for manual pipeline creation and management. The purpose of a multi-branch pipeline is to handle all branches in the repository. We make different pipeline for each branch. For example, suppose you want to perform complete CI CD pipeline for the master branch and only CI pipeline for the developed branch. You can do this with the help of multi branch pipeline project. So, let's move on to the demo part. And before moving there, if you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe it because it supports me to create more videos. So, with that, let's get started. So, go to your Jenkins dashboard and click on new item. Once done, Type of appropriate name like multi branch setup. You can give it anything. Then scroll down and select multi branch pipeline. This option and click on OK. This comes by default in the latest version of Jenkins. If it's not there, then it means you have to install a plugin. Once done, you can see that it has been created. So give the same name in the display name so that it would be visible. So you can give the name multi branch dash setup that's all and in the description you can give anything that makes it recognizable for you so setup for a multi branch pipeline let me add a dash in between great now there are multiple options over here we'll talk about everything like jenkins file and everything like branch sources but for now what we'll do is we'll just save it because i want to beautify it once done, you can see that the multi-branch setup project has been created for multi-branch pipeline. That's all you have to do right now. Now I'll show you my repository. You can get the code from here. It's free. You can see there is only one branch over here, which is the main branch. But for the setup, we have only one Jenkins file. So what do we need over here? We need a new branch. So let's call another branch as dev. So we'll do the setup for dev. Now I have created one more branch as you can see. Now there are two branches over here, exactly same code, main and the dev, and both has the same Jenkins file with the same steps. Let's go back to the project and configure it. Let me go back to dashboard. Okay, before that it's appearing on all. So let me create a view so that it would be easier for you to see it. You can choose any view. I'll choose the list view and give it a relevant name. I'll just give it a name, multi branch and you can add anything in front of it i just don't want to do that in the description you can give anything that is relevant to the name i'm doing this because it will make it easier to recognize in the dashboard so there are multiple jobs over here but all we have to choose is the third one which is multi-branch setup click on apply and okay your view has been created and you can see the clutter is removed and there is only one project let us open it in a new tab and let's start on configuring it. Click on configure. Once done, you can see that there is a lot of things. So first of all, on the branch sources, what do you have to do? You have to add a GitHub link, which I have shown you. So where does it come from? It will come from here. So on your right, click on code and copy this HTTPS link. Here, select any credentials. Uh, I'll select one of my credentials. You won't, uh, I need a second one. You only need it when you have a private branch or a private repository. Let me validate it. You can see that credentials. Okay, perfect. Now I can move forward. Now here there are multiple options available over here. You can edit all of them, but this is a very basic scenario so that you guys can understand it. Let's talk about the Jenkins file. So Jenkins file is the one thing that contains all these steps. If you see over here, there is a Jenkins file with the same name and make sure there, this is case sensitive. So make sure J and F is according to the file that you have given. In case you have a subdirectory, so you have to write a subdirectory name first and then after forward slash you have to give. 
I have this Jenkins file in my root repository. So that's why I'll know I won't give anything. And is this you can see there is an option days to keep an old item. If you're running out of space or something, you can give it accordingly or max number of old items to keep. For example, 10 builds or 20 builds, whatever you want, like 30 builds for a month depends on you. And it depends on the space that you want to provide to the older builds. Just click on save and obey. Okay. And that's all you have to do. Now click on left side scan repository now and let's see what happens. Now here is the magic that's going to happen. It will scan automatically and all you have to do is refresh the page. And you can see the pipeline has been created and both of them are green. Dev and main. Everything is perfect over here. Let us see what happens over here in dev and main. I've opened in a new tab and you can see five steps which were there in my Jenkins file. First, second, third and fourth. Let me open main. It will be exactly same. Why? Because they both are copy of each other. So you can see declarative first, second, third and fourth. Everything is perfect. Now what we can try do is let's go inside this Jenkins file. Let us understand there are four stages over here. First, second, third and fourth. And that's why in the dev pipeline and in the main pipeline, everything was same. Now what we'll do is we'll try to test and make some changes in the dev branch because we want to see whether this thing works separately or not. So let's do changes in the dev branch. Now what I'll do is I'll just edit this file. Let me scroll down. I'll copy one of the steps. Let me copy the fourth step. And I'll just edit it over here and paste it. I'll create a fifth step and edit it accordingly. You can do this by cloning it into your local and then pushing the changes to the repository. I'm doing it over here because it's faster for me to make you guys understand. You can do either way over here or from the local. Commit the changes after making the changes. That's all. There are five steps that were involved and you can see that it's done. And let me let me go back to my older setup and let me click on scan repository. Now, once done, let's see what happens. Let me refresh this page and you can see on the right side that the sign is blinking on my right side. It means it is running. Let us open it in a new tab. Once done, you can see, let me show you. Okay, you can see that the second step has been run and it's completed, which is green. And you can compare with one commit. Let me scroll over and you can see that the message which I gave adding fifth stage in the dev branch is appearing. And you can see that there are five steps now which were not there in the previous build. So this is the fifth step. So I think it would have made it clear that if you'll refresh in the main, there is no change, right? So because we did not do any change in the Jenkins file for the main branch. So now you, you might have understood. Let me close everything. So let me refresh this again. You can see that the dev has run 44 seconds ago. So now you can make the difference that what happened in the dev branch did not reflect in the main branch because we have the different strategy. And that's what I've discussed. We keep them separate because we want to do some kind of steps with dev branch and some kind of steps with main branch. We want to do delivery from master branch or main branch and some testing with the dev branch. So we make the changes accordingly. So I hope uh, you guys have understood it. If not, please feel free to comment and we'll address the issue. So thanks guys and I'll see you in the next video.